Matthias Grote, I've asked you to come here. You are more or less a specialist on environmental matters. You are a long-term member of the Committee for Environment. Um, I would like to know your opinion about this GMO. Is that, isn't that wonderful that we can have exactly the crops we want to, that we can do it wherever we want to, and have everything as we want? The idea is fascinating, but in practice, uh, I guess that not every detail is in our calculation. So that we are running risk to end up with a mess when we stop the ban on GMOs. And uh, uh, there's a high risk to yeah, create other problems. What kind of problems? Problems that other uh, crops are infected, that we create uh, mutants and uh, different kind of, of uh, other things which are not uh, calculated. And the use of GMOs, we know yeah, not really exactly everything about it. And I guess if we start with such a technology with genetic modified organisms, then we need to know really nearly 100% what does it mean. But have we already interfered in nature by, for instance, having this monoculture way of agriculture? Of course, we are using pesticide, biocide, and uh, to, to uh, yeah, create more and gain more from the fields. Uh, uh, it's clear, it's, 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 since we cultivate, uh, 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 since we have a cultivation on farms, uh, it's a procedure. But this is the next step, a really major step to yeah, change the world in the end of the day. And many, many people, especially in Germany, they have concerns. 86% in Germany are not sure and they are against GMO, the use of GMOs, because they feel not comfortable. Okay, then we can say, is it really a, a luxury debate? It's a typical German debate. We know the wording, the German angst. I guess we have to handle the things really seriously and we have to take these concerns into account. But isn't it up to the EU to make rules when it comes to environmental matters? Yes, we need rules. We need clear rules and we had no really clear rules before and then all things ended up at the court. It's the European Court where sometimes we had decisions pro-GMOs, then we had decisions against GMOs. So I'm a really, I like clear legislation. Okay, what we adopted now, it's a compromise in the parliament and the question of the financial finance question is not answered but member states who don't want gmos want to ban gmos they are not they are now able to do it and they have a safety that yeah, the law many people ask for leadership even uh, not only on uh, national but on eu level isn't it um, up to the parliament here to the um, EU as such to show a way into the future? Can you avoid to do it without GMOs? I guess that we can avoid it without GMOs. Um, nearly 50% of our food we are throwing away. We are putting it into the waste bin. Uh, so there are many, many things to solve, uh, to solve problems we have in the world. So the people have not enough food. Um, so we have to secure that we are not throwing away a food. 50% it's ending up in waste. Tell me what's the situation in the committee? Uh, everyone uh, on one side or is it divided like the discussion out there in real life or is a majority on one of the sides? How is it? 
No, we had a broad agreement uh, on it, and also the Greens were until the end on board, and then they had a um, debate in the group. One part, not the majority, one in to, the group, in the Green group. In the green they wanted group. to support the compromise, but at the end of the day, they voted against the compromise because they are fundamentally against GMOs. Okay, it's fine. It's if the decision is so, but in the end of the day, we need clarification. And if you vote against uh, of what you negotiated in a long, long process, uh, it's not serious, from my, from my opinion. But the conservatives, uh, they are even demanding more. Yeah, they were also split it into, into parts. Uh, for example, in Germany, the German CSU, they are strictly against the use of GMO. And the sister party, CDU, um, they are more in favour. So it was an interesting debate in the in the parliament, and also an interesting way, and different different groups in the groups who supported the compromise. And in the end of the day, we had a broad majority for the compromise. And I'm really glad that we have something now. Some people say that the solution lies in labelling. It's not the ideal solution. It's totally clear. But we have often here in the parliament that we need compromise that everybody feels pain and then it's a good compromise. If not everybody is set, completely satisfied, then it's a good compromise. I guess we are stop forward now that we uh, take into account what the people think but also what is necessary for uh, food security and uh, to handle also the risk. Mrs. Evans, <coughs> you are strongly favoring um, a ban on GMO products, correct? Is that a general ban on all GMO products? Yes, uh, I don't believe that the time is right for us to be growing and planting GM crops and having GM products freely moving around and on our shelves. I'm not against the development of the technology, of, of course you can't be, but I don't think that we have enough evidence that there's no possible dangers to health or to the environment that we should take the step of allowing this, uh, these GM crops to be grown freely. And so that is why I voted against the proposal yesterday, um, because I think it's too early to be allowing GM crops to be grown across Europe, which is what this will mean. But on the other hand, when we are taking a pill, medicine, whatever, we are taking GMO uh, products uh, in, in the daily life. I think there's, it's true that in some ways we can't avoid some products. But of course, I am an elected member. I represent the people in Wales that voted for me, the vast majority of whom don't want GM products. The reason why a lot of the, the big food companies are against labelling and the, the biotech companies are against labelling GM products is because they know people won't buy them. And uh, I think that I have a responsibility then to represent the, the views of people who want their foods to be natural, to be local, to be organic, whichever it is. But nobody writes to me from my constituency and says, I want GM food. That's what you're told during the debate. Uh, but I wonder, um, the so-called treaty uh, agreement between uh, US and Canada and the EU um, is a way of having GMO food coming to our market without a possibility of saying no thank you. Yes, and that's why I oppose those agreements too. Um, but I, I might sound uh, at risk of, of just being opposed to everything. I'm not. We have a very well-developed, a very high-quality agriculture sector in Wales. We have a flourishing Welsh food industry and I think that we need policies that will protect and promote that. Now, the, the policy of, of, of England being able to grow GM crops, of course, is going to have some effect on Wales. 
The Welsh Government, I very much hope, will be one of the first countries to impose a, a national ban. But nevertheless, just across, over the border, there could be GM crops growing in England. And I think that will do damage to our agriculture and to our economy, which is why we have to have the strongest measures possible to, to protect that. But again, can you avoid mm -hmm. products coming from over the from the other side of the Atlantic to come on the, your market as well? I think it's been shown several times um, that it's very difficult to prevent any kind of uh, cross-contamination or any kind of, of GM products coming into our food chain. Um, for example, a lot of animal feed is, is GM. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Than, than other feed and so I quite understand that farmers want to use the GM products because they are in any case having a very difficult time now. But that's the, the, the fault of the economy, it's, it's the uh, system that allows those GM products to be cheaper and I believe that part of that is that animals fed on GM feed, the meat is not then labelled as GM meat. Now, I, I think that's something that needs to be put right within our labelling system. Um, and there's a lot um, still within the whole GM authorisation process at a European level that needs to be addressed. And I, I hope that the Commission will do that. But where lies your limit okay. for what could be uh, allowed, so to speak? Well, I think that the, the limits that we set in 2001 with the new legislation, um, I wanted stronger limits, but those, those limits, I think, have ensured that we have a very minimal um, pollution Could or, or cross-contamination. limits? Well, the 0.9%, for example, um, to before a pro produce would have to be labelled. Um, now, uh, I say, as I say, I, I pushed for more at the time. Um, but uh, one thing that I think we have to preserve is the, the right for um, only crops which are uh, approved at a European level to be grown in Europe. I see some of the um, companies now today that have come out uh, against what was decided in Parliament yesterday saying these are all safe products but we are not allowed to grow them in Europe because they, they haven't yet been, been authorised. Now, um, of course, there's a, a big lobby from those companies, but I think that there's a stronger lobby from consumers and from citizens. And this is why I always encourage my constituents to, to write to me and to, to make their view as clear as well. But you have achieved a compromise. A compromise always means somebody gave in, um, somebody gained. Mm. Um, didn't you gain anything? Yes. Uh, I think that a lot was gained in the negotiations, actually, because if you look at the original proposal, uh, it was very different from the one we had now, uh, which is why some of the member states, like the UK, for example, um, which had supported it earlier, then abstained uh, on, on the final vote in the Council. Yes, there were gains. Um, there are still environmental grounds for... Um, for, for instigating a ban um, and of course the bans themselves that countries now although some have in the past including Wales um, but some member states too like like Austria and Croatia have had national bans but they weren't legally allowed to do that they always could be challenged so what we have now uh, is a, a, a system whereby those countries that don't want GMOs can prevent GMOs in their own territory but, but since you're not very limit. satisfied what's the next step well uh, I accept the vote as you say it was a compromise and my next step now is ensuring that the Welsh Government acts very quickly to look at what the technical process is for implementing a, a ban on GMOs that looks at the strongest possible measures, buffer zones and so on, to prevent any 
cross-contamination and that GM Free Wales is one of the first GM countries in the whole of Europe. But you are a member of the European Parliament. Wouldn't you like the um, EU to uh, have more positive steps, in your opinion? Well, the, um, President Juncker promised that within six months he would review the process of actually authorising different GMOs because at the moment it's not democratic, um, it's certainly not acceptable, it has led to uh, a logjam at uh, the level of the, the Council and the Commission and uh, that has to be totally revised and he said he would do that in six months and so that's what we'll be pushing for. Ms Corosa, a bit you are strongly favouring that we start using GMO crops all over, correct? No, I'm in favour of science. We should legislate based on scientific findings and not on people's emotion or opinion polls. And that's been the problem with the compromise that has gone through. We are leaving member states the possibility to forbid the continuation of scientific research to find new crops, to advance in biotechnology based on fears or what people think. Now, I have a great understanding, and we should, of what people think, fears and concerns of the unknown. But we politicians have to take responsibility to lead and not to follow opinion polls. The European Food Safety Authority has been researching for 25 years. We have invested millions of European euros in research and the findings are clear there is no risk associated with GMO more than any traditional crop for health for food security and for animal welfare so why we should forbid it but aren't you uh, aware of that emotions sometimes have to be taken into consideration when it comes to political judgments not in legislation Emotion should be responded to, should be understood, and should be met with leadership, which means clarifying to people uh, what science is saying. You know, Galileo, Copernico, Leonardo da Vinci, they were blocked by, by dogmatism, by ideology. Are we going to do that in the 21st century? Biotechnology research has to continue in Europe. Very fine. If you if you feel secured when it comes to the European field, or well, not right. me, science, scientific okay, people that. say that, researchers say that. But now we are uh, entering a new situation by having uh, trade agreements with Canada and the USA. Yes. Are we sure that the ways of using um, the GMOs in the States and in Canada are at the standards we demand in Europe? Well, for the first, we have now fragmented the internal market in Europe because by leaving member states the possibility to forbid it and others to produce it in a, in a Europe without borders, you don't know anymore what's going to be the food. And I think that the free choice should be for the consumer and the producer, not for the member states to forbid. So we, don't know, we will not know the situation in Europe. The second is with the United States. I have been very clear since I deal a lot with food that we will not change our standards or lower our standards of food security. And in Europe, it has to be the European Food Safety Authority who assesses one by one mice and other crops uh, if they can be developed as uh, GMO or not. In the case of mice, the European Food Safety Authority has said yes six times. And in Europe, we have the hardest and the highest standards of assessing GMOs. We should keep them. Last question. Isn't it a question about labeling all of it? Well, there is an, uh, it is obligatory to label GMO, and that is very good, because consumer free choice is very important. Let me say one last thing, if I may. Hunger in the world is a real issue. I spent an entire afternoon in Brazil talking to the leadership, to the Minister of Agriculture, and with a lot of respect, they say, you know, you are doing this luxury debate in the north while people will be starving in the south. We'll have 10 billion people. How do we feed them if we, if we stop technology, biotechnology, innovation, research? Of course, we need to find new crops. We need to find more resistant crops. We need to deal 
with the fact that everybody has the right to eat, not only in Europe.